Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob, and in this two-part video series, we're looking at building mimic panels using Arduinos. And in this first video, we'll be building a mimic panel that works alongside JMRI and computer control. And in the second video, we'll be building a standalone mimic panel that doesn't require any computer control in the background. But in both cases, we will be using an Arduino to read sensor inputs and control outputs. And just a warning in advance, there will be some coding involved, less so for the JMRI version because JMRI does a lot of work for us in the background, more so for the standalone version, but I will do my best to try and guide you through it. But before we get started, what is a mimic panel? A mimic panel, sometimes known as a panel, is a way of visualizing your layout and getting data about what's happening on it. It could tell you things like the position of trains and how your points are set. It might also allow you to control things on your layout, for example, signals or the position of points. Full-size railways have panels in signal boxes, and this is what we're trying to recreate for our model railway, but usually in a much simpler way. If you find these videos useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And if you want YouTube to let you know when videos come out in the future, remember to hit that notifications button. OK, let's get started. I'm going to be demonstrating how to do this on my small test layout and if you've seen my previous videos on automation then this layout might be familiar. The layout is separated into three blocks which are electrically isolated from each other using insulated rail joiners. We've got this length on the left leading up to the point as the first block, then we've got this siding off the point which forms the second block and we've got this point itself and this short section of track on the right which form the third block. Each block is connected to a Merg current sensor. Again, you may recognize these from a previous video. The point or turnout in the middle is operated by a servo point motor and this is connected to a PCA9685 servo driver board. There is also a turnout position feedback sensor on the point motor in the form of this micro switch. So the three block occupancy current sensors and the turnout position sensor give us four sensors in total on the layout. To manage the sensor inputs from the layout and control the PCA9685 board, I'm going to be using an Arduino Mega with a sensor shield. This will be set up as a CMRI node in JMRI and we'll take a look at the sketch I'm using shortly. As well as managing the inputs and outputs to the layout, I'm also going to use this Arduino CMRI node to manage the inputs and outputs to my Mimic panel. For my Mimic panel, I've drawn a basic diagram of the layout using a black marker. I've decided I want to have blue LEDs for each block, which will show whether the block is occupied or not. I also want green LEDs to indicate whether the turnout is thrown or closed. Finally, I've got a button here that when pressed will allow me to change the position of the turnout. Each of the LEDs are connected to output pins on the Arduino CMRI node. You'll need to pair the LEDs with a resistor to avoid damaging them. I'm using a 100 ohm resistor for each LED. The button I'm using is a push to make button, which means that the electrical circuit is only completed when my finger is pushing down on the button. When it's not being pressed, there is no connection. The button is set up as an input on the CMRI node. I'm not going to go into detail about the wiring here because firstly I've covered adding inputs and outputs to CMRI nodes in my previous videos and secondly everyone's layout is going to be different so there's no point in examining this one in detail. You may not even be using CMRI to communicate with your railway but do keep watching as you might find something useful when we come to look at JMRI. One thing I will say about the wiring is that, as you can see, even a mimic panel for a small layout requires quite a bit of wiring and will take up a lot of input and output connections, so requires careful planning. Before we move on to JMRI, let's take a quick look at the sketch that I've uploaded onto the Arduino. Again, it's very similar to the sketch I used in my previous CMRI videos. So here we've got the sketch. It's going to be a CMRI node on address 1. I'm setting it up as an SUSIC node with 64 inputs and 128 outputs. Here we're setting pins 3 to 45 as inputs and 46 to 69 as outputs. This section deals with the servo for the turnout. Here I'm setting up the five sensors on pins 3 to 7. These are for the three block occupancy current sensors, the turnout feedback micro switch sensor and the mimic panel push button sensor. And below that I'm setting up five outputs on pins 46 to 50 for the LEDs on the mimic panel. And that's the sketch. You can get a similar version of this from my GitHub page and I'll put a link in the description below. Let's move on to JMRI. 
It might feel like I'm moving quite quickly through parts of this, but a lot of this stuff, such as setting up a CMRI connection and adding turnouts and sensors has been covered in my previous videos, and I'd like to focus on the specific steps needed for the Mimic panel. You can always slow the video down or jump back if you need to. So first, let's check that our CMRI connection looks okay. That's on address one. It's got the right number of inputs and outputs and the board rate is correct. So let's start by adding our five sensors. Sensor 1 is on address 1001 corresponding to pin 3 and this is for our mimic panel push button. I'm going to put a debounce delay on this sensor of half a second which means after you take your finger off it will take at least half a second for it to go from active to inactive. And this is just to make sure we don't accidentally get multiple activations from a single push where maybe you haven't pushed down hard enough or your finger slightly comes off whilst you're pushing the button. Next, we'll add the three block occupancy current sensors on addresses 1002, 1003, and 1004, which correspond to the left block, the siding, and the right block. I'm not going to put any debounce delay in for these because they've already got electronic debounce delay built into the circuit. Finally, we'll add the turnout feedback sensor on 1005. It shouldn't flicker, but I'll put a short debounce delay on this just in case. Now let's add the turnout. This is on address 1001, and we'll just call it turnout. And we're going to add this using one bit and steady state. And in here, we'll change the feedback to sensor driven and select the turnout feedback sensor. So let's just double check that that works. Let's head over to the lights table and add the three blue LEDs on address 1101, 1102 and 1103, which correspond to the left block, the siding and the right block. And then we'll add the two green LEDs which show the position of the turnout. 11.04 is thrown and 11.05 is closed. And we can check these by clicking the on off buttons. One important thing to note here is that an Arduino is limited by the current it can supply and can only drive a certain number of LEDs directly connected to the output pins. The maximum total current draw allowed on all pins differs slightly between the types of Arduino, but it's roughly between 150 milliamps and 200 milliamps, which means it can only directly support maybe a maximum of 10 LEDs being on at the same time. That's fine for my small mimic panel, but if I needed more LEDs, then I'd need to use another method, such as connecting them to a PCA9685, or by using transistors, or maybe using a MOSFET. Check out my video on controlling LEDs to make a coloured light signal with an Arduino if you want to know more about using LEDs with a PCA9685. But back to our Mimic panel. Now this is where JMRI has some clever tools which help us link the layout to the Mimic panel. Let's go back into the blue LED for the left block on address 1102. Press edit and click add controller. We want this LED to come on when the block occupancy sensor is active. So in the drop down list, choose sensors and select the block occupancy sensor for the left block. Hit create and update. Repeat this step for the remaining two block LEDs. For the turnout position indicators, again, click edit add controller and we want these to respond to the position of the turnout. So select by turnout status from the drop down list, choose our turnout, select thrown for the thrown indicator and closed for the closed indicator. Now for the button, we need to go into the logics menu. This is a really powerful area of JMRI that allows you to generate outputs depending on certain inputs through a series of if then statements. Click add and give it a name like turn out button and click create. Now we need to add a new conditional. Give it a name and then click add state variable. So here we want to select our push button. We want JMRI to check if the push button is being pressed, i.e. active. Down here, 
make sure that execute actions on change of state only is selected. Now we need to tell JMRI what needs to happen when the button is pressed. So hit add action and select turnouts. Put in our turnouts name and select the action type as set turnout. When the button is pressed, we want the turnout to change positions. So if it's thrown, then we want it closed. And if it's closed, then we want it thrown. Now we could write some clever if statements here to check which position it's in and do the opposite, but JMRI has helped us out here and we can select toggle from the position drop down, which basically means do the opposite of whatever it's on now. And we want this to happen when the button being active is true. Hit update, update again, and done. Let's press our button and see what happens. That's everything done for my small layout, so let's have a test run with my Hornby Peckett and see what happens. Keep an eye on the Mimic Panel LEDs and you should see the blue LEDs go on and off as it moves between the blocks. So there we go, our mirroring panel is working perfectly. And as you can see, even for a small layout like this, there's quite a lot of work to get it up and running. But thanks to JMRI, we don't have to do very much programming at all. In part two, we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but without JMRI. So all that work that JMRI is doing in the background for us, we're gonna to have to code into the Arduino itself. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notifications button if you want YouTube to let you know when videos come out in the future. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.